Hi there. Welcome to Ben's Astrophotography. For an astrophotographer like me who lives in a city and cannot go to dark sites as often as I wanted, narrowband filters is the only secret to get great images from my backyard. I purchased my ASI 1600MMC camera two years ago, together with the ZWO filter kit. The H-Alpha, O3 and S2 narrowband filters that came with the kit were 7 nanometer filters. They were not perfect, but did a great job so far. Here is some of the pictures that I took with them. But since I upgraded to Epsilon 180, it appeared to me that maybe I should try out those narrowband filters made for big focal ratio telescopes. Plus, when processing my recent shots on the North America nebula, the ugly halo of a magnitude 5 star really bothered me. So last week, I pulled the trigger and get a new set of Bader Planetarium F2 high-speed narrowband filters. First, let me show you how I install these filters in the filter wheel. This is a ZWO EFW 8 position filter wheel. It can take 1 and quarter inch as well as 31 millimeter filters. If you do the calculation, 1 and quarter inch is almost the same as 31 millimeter. So why they have different names? That's simply because 1 and quarter inch is a popular size for eyepieces, and 1 quarter inch filters can be easily mounted to these eyepieces by the thread. 31 mm round filters are exclusively used for astrophotography. They are, or they should be, nothing but pieces of round glass with some coating. I open the cover, and the first filter I install is a 1 quarter inch luminance filter. As you see, this type of filters are super easy to handle and mount. Just grab the thick metal rim, thread it in. But same time, 1 quarter inch filters will get you darker corners if you have a fast telescope like mine. Now comes the real thing. Bader Planetarium F2 high-speed H-alpha filter. Since it's just a piece of glass, I need to be very careful when handling it to avoid any fingerprints on it. Also, it has different coatings for each side, which means I need to figure out what's the right side to install it. On the official website, Bader stated there's an arrow on the edge. The arrow should be pointing to the telescope. So I find the arrow here and I place it on the filter wheel as instructed. Then I need to use three screws with rubber washers to fix it. Again, it needs some special care here. Remember, no fingerprints. Also, you definitely don't want to scratch your filter with the screw or the screwdriver. I'll do the same for O3 and S2 filters. By the way, if you see some flickering, that's my headlight. It's very much recommended to have it when you deal with filters, cameras, lens, etc. Because they are very sensitive to dust, and the headlight will help you spot and blow them right away. On the edge of S2 filter, the arrow is a bit sketchy, but that's fine. Now you must be as eager as I am to see how good it turned out. This is a pretty unique narrowband filter on the market, because officially Bader never revealed how wide the band pass is. We all know the famous Astrodon 3 nanometer filters. They are extremely expensive. And then 5 nanometers, 7 and 8 and all the way up to 12 nanometers. Basically, the smaller band pass, the better. But for this F2 high-speed filter set, Bader intentionally keeps their bandpass a secret. Rumors has it 12 nanometer, but that's just rumors. Before I show you the results, I should say it's not a strictly scientific comparison. Some factors are not controlled here, like 
they are taking during different nights with different transparency, seeing and different moon phases. The controlled factors are same location, same optical train, same subframe exposure, same number of subs, and the same CMOS temperature. All of the stacked images are automatically stretched by PixInsight. Okay, let's see the results. H-alpha. I can spot the difference right on the screen when taking subs. Now I'm comparing two stacked images of 30 minutes for each filter. ZWO filter has a slightly vague halo around a magnitude 5 star, but butter filter doesn't have that at all. For the nebulosity, this is ZWO filter and this is butter. Apparently, butter filter shows more details with higher contrast. Oxygen 3. These are 45 minutes stacked images. ZWO filter has a significant halo around that MAG 5 star, and unfortunately, the butter filter has some halo too. It's less significant, but it's there. On nebulosity, this is ZWO and this is butter. Butter has higher signal with higher noise, so I'm afraid the improvement is very marginal. For S2, they are also 45 minutes stacked images. ZWO filter also gives a significant halo around this Mac 5 star, and its butter counterpart doesn't have it. Let's check the nebulosity. This is ZWO and this is butter. This time again, butter brings more contrast and more details. On a side note, butter H alpha and S2 filters are exactly par focal on my f2.8 scope, but the O3 filter is not. This filter set is not promised to be par focal, so this comes as a nice surprise. Let's conclude. ZWO narrowband filter set costs $425 and the butter high speed filter set costs $535. So they are roughly in the same price range. For the mechanical quality, I prefer butter filters. Their coatings cover 100% of the glasses, no leak of any sort. On the optical side, butter's H alpha and S2 filters yield better result with my f2.8 fast OTA and they have no halos so far. However, Butter's O3 filter only performs slightly better than its ZWO counterpart. So, generally speaking, I'm getting better image with the new Butter Planetarium F2 high-speed narrowband filter set. Star halos are much less and easier to get rid of. I'm finishing with this final image of the dark nebula between North America and Pelican Nebula in SHO Hubble Palette. Hope you like it. Oh, by the way, after 4 months and 13 videos, my channel is having almost 200 subscribers. Thank you all for the support. And if you like my videos and haven't subscribed yet, please do that so you will not be missed out for my next updates. See you next time.